Hi, and welcome to this video demonstration on configuring ground control sphere with the Apogee Symphony IO Mark II. For starters, download the free trial of ground control sphere directly from gingeraudio.com. If your trial is expired and you're ready to activate the software with the license, select Sphere Atmos and enter your email and license number. Next, install the latest software installer for the Symphony IO Mark II from Apogee.com. Once your interface is detected, change the sample rate to 48 kilohertz and select the output accordingly. If you're using powered studio monitors, change the output to speaker. But if you're using passive studio monitors with an amplifier, leave it online. This will allow you to control all your speakers by using the big dial on the Symphony I.O. or by using the Apogee control hardware. Next, go to the Sphere application and select Settings, Master Clock and Sample Rate, and select Symphony I.O. Thunderbolt. Also ensure the sample rate is set accordingly to 48 kilohertz. Next, click on the gear icon found in the main output section. Choose Symphony I.O. And for Dolby Atmos mixing, it is recommended that you use a minimum of a 7.1.4 speaker configuration. The speaker channels are automatically routed to playback channels 1 through 12. Within Ground Control Sphere, you can activate bass management, apply corrective EQ to each one of your outputs, and employ time alignment. Now that we have the outputs properly configured, let's monitor music mixed in Dolby Atmos. Ground Control Sphere offers up to eight input sources. Select input A, click the gear icon, and choose Sphere 16 Mon. This is a virtual sound card. For the main output of Mac, select Sphere 16, and now any application that you play through the Mac, whether it's Apple Music, Apple TV, or even YouTube, will get routed to input A. Let's launch Apple Music, Choose Settings. In the Playback tab, you'll find Dolby Atmos. Ensure that this is set to Automatic. Let's check out the Now and Then single by The Beatles, which was mixed and mastered in stereo and in Dolby Atmos. Input A detects a playback coming from Apple Music, and the input meters we can monitor by Peak or LUFS. Next, switch over to Symphony Control. Click I.O. Scroll down and enable the speaker set for playback channels 1 through 12. Another thing that's crucially important when mixing in Dolby Atmos is the ability to monitor the binaural mix in real time. Let me show you how to configure that using the Dolby Atmos renderer software. By choosing Preferences and selecting Sphere 32 Mon. This will route the audio between the renderer and the Sphere control panel. In the Output sections, enable Speakers, Headphone, and Re-Renders. You also want to make sure the headphone mode is set to binaural. Now go to Setup, Room Setup, click the headphone icon, and route the left and right channels to 13 and 14. I'll explain why in a minute. Click Accept, and I'll load up a Dolby Atmos master file. With the master file being played by the renderer, let's jump back to Ground Control Sphere. We'll select input D, click the gear icon, and choose Sphere 32 Mon Stereo, and select Sphere 32 Mon channels 13 and 14. This is where the binaural mix is being routed to. Click Send to QA, and verify that the QA outputs are routed to the Symphony playback 13 and 14. Next, we'll jump to Symphony Control, and in the headphone section, we're going to monitor playback 13 and 14 which means that at any time you can mute your speakers and monitor the binaural mix in real time. By integrating the superior quality converters of the Symphony I.O. Mark II with Ground Control Sphere, you have the power to transform your home studio into a professional grade mixing room fully equipped to handle the advanced multi-channel mixing formats like Dolby Atmos. For more information on the Symphony I.O. Mark II, be sure to visit Apogee.com and for a free trial of Ground Control Sphere, be sure to visit gingeraudio.com.
Thank you so much for watching.